Welcome to Inside Scoop, Virginia. My name is George Burke, and uh, my guest tonight is Fairfax County Supervisor Sharon Bulova. Sharon currently represents the Braddock District on the County Board of Supervisors, and uh, she is running for chairman of that board in a special election on February 3rd. Uh, the Jerry Connolly, the current board chairman, uh, up until January 2nd, he's now resigned, uh, will take office on Tuesday as Virginia's new 11th Congressional District representative. Uh, this election, again, I want to stress, is on February 3rd. It's a special election. It's very important you get out and vote. Sharon, it's great to have you. Uh, Sharon is uh, a longtime member of the board. She served 21 years on the board, 17 of them as a member of the board's budget committee. Uh, she is vice chair of the board of supervisors, has, has an extensive record that I'm not going to go through in great detail now because we'll be discussing it during the course of the show. Uh, but let me just say I sort of view her as a... Uh, uh, a major player when it comes to VRE and some of the other transportation issues and she certainly uh, spent some time guiding us uh, through uh, various budget issues over the year. Sharon, it's great to have you. Thank Welcome. You, George. Thanks, it's great to be here. Let me just start by saying, how's the campaign going? <laughs> it's, coming, it's coming along extremely well. We've got a wonderful uh, team. Uh, we're working really hard and uh, uh, unlike other elections that we've recently experienced, this one is going to be very brief. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. so short, intense, um, and a lot of energy. You are very uh, composed for someone <laughs> who's involved in a very frantic uh, campaign. You know, to, to wage a campaign in what's in essence less than 45, 60 days now, there's uh, less than a month left. Uh, and we're talking about a county, I guess we're about 1.1 million people That's now, right. and you're running in nine magisterial districts. Uh, the people in the Braddock district are very familiar with you. They've returned you uh, to office time and time again, and now I guess you're spending a lot of time introducing yourself throughout the rest of the county. That is uh, my mission. As you said, I've represented the Braddock District for 21 years. Mm -hmm. uh, my constituents know me well, and I've enjoyed very much uh, serving as their supervisor. Uh, but my challenge is making sure that people throughout the county know me, know what I'm all about, and, uh, and I'm looking forward to, uh, to meeting as many people as I can. Uh, during this period of time and, and of course as budget chairman and as vice chairman of the Board of Supervisors I have had a chance to get into other districts uh, and get to know the different needs and the different issues that uh, that uh, our, our various districts and supervisors have so I have that advantage. And as a uh, as a uh, the chairman of the board you're really everyone's local supervisor in some ways. That's right. And in fact, as uh, the uh, Jerry Connolly, who has served us so well, always says, every district has two supervisors, uh, the district supervisor as well as the chairman of the board of supervisors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I noticed uh, you certainly have, you've picked up uh, Jerry Connolly's endorsement, soon Congressman-elect Connolly now. Uh, but I also noticed you received another endorsement that's near and dear to my heart because I worked with them for many years, and that's the International Association of Firefighters. Yes. Uh, local 2068 here in, in Fairfax County. Not only is it one of the best fire departments uh, in the United States, if not the world, uh, it's a very, they're a very potent political force within Fairfax County. They work very hard on behalf of candidates. Uh, what some people don't know is they, they judge a candidate not by political party, mm -hmm. but by their effectiveness in terms of, of uh, how they have done their job and how they're expected to do their job. So I congratulate you on that. Thank That's you. A, a very good, uh, important endorsement on my part. Um, why don't you spend a couple of minutes talking a little bit for me about your career, some of the things okay. you've done. I mean, I, you, uh, I'm looking at a list here that's rather daunting in terms of uh, the various committees you've served on, uh, the various things that you uh, uh, are involved in at this point. So please, let me give you a couple of minutes on Well, um, thank you. I appreciate uh, the opportunity. Um, I was first elected to the board in 1987, and when I was first elected, um, 
one of my very first goals were to establish the commuter rail system, the VRE that mm -hmm. exists now. And uh, I'm especially proud of that. And when I see the VRE pull into one of our stations uh, in Fairfax County and actually throughout the region, um, I feel especially proud of that. Um, it was an opportunity to start something brand new. Um, I've been, I am a huge proponent of rail, and I firmly believe that, uh, that rail and mass transit is a major component of the mosaic uh, that it will be needed in order to address our transportation challenges. Uh, I'm a believer in connecting different modes of transportation, and, uh, and so one of the things I would like to see happen now that we have the new hot lanes under construction is to have bus service on those lanes uh, so that they can connect with the VRE and also Metro in the, in the uh, uh, Dulles Corridor. I've served, as you said, on uh, almost everything. <laughs> uh, the, there, of there is the Council of Governments, that, yeah. uh, Air Quality Committee with the Council of Governments. Uh, that's been something that uh, <coughs> is especially important to me, making sure that we have clean air, clean mm -hmm. water, environmental protection. And uh, as Vice Chairman of the Board of Supervisors, I've you know, been able to, uh, to be out in the county and uh, to represent the board in a number of uh, major initiatives and in, uh, in places uh, that, that reach into all of the districts. Um, I guess one of, the, one of the other things that I'm especially uh, interested in and working on right now, I've always been interested in trying to make our growth uh, and development strategies work better. And if you keep doing what you're doing, you keep getting what you get. And we have wonderful neighborhoods, we have you know, a wonderful community, but our growth strategies of the past where you have you know, essentially isolated neighborhoods where even to go buy a loaf of bread or to take your child to soccer practice, you have to get into your car to go there. And uh, so working with the Council of Governments and also working on, uh, on plans for Tyson's Corner, um, we're moving towards uh, more walkable, transit-oriented development. And, uh, and that's something that I have been doing and want to make sure continues to happen and develop in Fairfax County. The, well, let's face it, uh, I think the number one issue in Fairfax County uh, among most residents is transportation. Obviously, the economy is distracting them uh, at this point. Uh, but transportation is, is at the tip of everyone's tongues. Uh, you know, we live in a, uh, an affluent area where everybody has two, three, four cars. That's true. Uh, they're all on the road. Uh, I've seen it, as I know you have. I've just seen traffic continue to increase and increase and certainly seen efforts to attempt to resolve it. And it just seems to, every time something is resolved, it just more traffic fills the gap. And uh, I think you're absolutely right about the whole point. The more mass transit we get, the better off we are. Um, uh, how do we get all this done? I mean, what's it going to take? Is it a, do we need a regional approach? Is, it, is that how it needs to be done in order to make sure that, that the, our, our transportation problems don't start and end at the county line? I, I think our approaches need to be both locally as well as regionally. And uh, it's important that our board continues to be a cohesive place where you know, we're all pulling together to accomplish uh, you know, what we need to do in order to take care of uh, things that are happening within the county. But then stepping back, we need to take a regional approach towards our major uh, growth and development uh, initiatives and also transportation. Um, we, we, in, in the past, we've had, you know, we've had patterns of growth that have been counter to our, to our good. And you'll see one county or city uh, doing something that just conflicts with what, you know, their neighbors are doing. And uh, with the Council of Governments, the Greater Washington Initiative, we're looking at establishing um, some agreements regionally uh, and actually to be able to sign a compact, an agreement, like we did when the region was establishing Metro. Uh, we pulled together to establish the Metro system and the, the different uh, localities and states and uh, the District of Columbia agreed 
uh, to work on something that would serve the whole region well. And just as we did that, I think that the compact that we're working on at COG and that our jurisdictions are going to be uh, asked to adopt will also adopt better strategies for growth and development as we move into the future. So um, I, I'm kind of excited about that, and it's the first time that we've really um, attempted to get the kind of agreement that is needed in order to have future growth and development that you know, doesn't cause conflict and doesn't cause chaos in our transportation system. The uh, speaking of metro and speaking of transportation, uh, it looks like uh, at least the first leg of rail to Dulles, metro to Dulles is uh, going to become a reality. Yes. Uh, there, there were times where it looked like it, will, it was lost and uh, finally we got some good news. It's been sort of like the perils of Pauline, you know, it's up, it's down, and uh, it's, it's dead, it's alive, and, uh, and it looks like we, we really are going to happily um, move forward with the first phase of, uh, of the project. And already pro uh, you can see construction happening to move utilities to make way for the construction of rail into the Tysons area. The uh, obviously one of the controversies that surrounded the uh, the project was the whole idea of a tunnel versus the the aerial, and uh, uh, I think sometimes our viewers, some of our viewers and, and the like, don't realize that that was not dictated at the county level, nor even dictated at the state level. That was dictated at the federal level. In the in the end, um, while I think all of us thought the idea of putting rail underground in the Tysons area was appealing and preferable. Uh, it was deemed to be riskier and uh, the costs were uh, seen to be probably prohibitive uh, by the federal government. And so there was a hesitancy on their part uh, to support our stopping everything and, um, and trying to design something that was different than what they had already been uh, reviewing. The, uh uh, well, that once there's rail all the way to Dulles, boy, for those of us, I don't fly as much as I used to. It will be a welcome, be a welcome change to be able to uh, to travel that way. Um, the uh, VRE, uh, are we going to? Uh, uh, will we continue to see more expansion in terms of the level of service on that? Do you think? Yes, and um, I've seen VRE grow from, I think in the beginning we thought we would have, I think about 4,500 passengers mm -hmm. uh, riding the VRE uh, when it first started, and that was in the early 90s. And now we're looking at uh, 16,000 people riding the VRE, and I, and I see us expanding. We've already started uh, to go up meaning that we've, we now have a double-decker fleet. Mm -hmm. uh, we used to have sort of a hodgepodge of uh, mostly uh, single-level cars, and so we have more capacity. We also have uh, provided more parking at the different stations. And in my Braddock district, we've just completed a new uh, parking garage, and we're doing that in other areas as well. Let's hold that thought. We're going to go to a break. Uh, you're watching uh, Inside Scoop Virginia. I'm George Burke. My guest today is Sharon Bulova, uh, running for chair of the Fairfax County Board of Supervisors. Right I need a job. Necesito trabajo. I would like to speak English better. Me gustaría hablar inglés mejor. I want to be a U.S. citizen. Quisiera ser ciudadano de los Estados Unidos. For over 35 years. Por más de 35 años. The Hispanic Committee of Virginia has been serving our community. El Comité Hispano de Virginia ha estado sirviendo a nuestra comunidad. Job training and placement. Capacitación. Ayuda para conseguir trabajo. Education for children and adults. Educación para niños y adultos. Immigration, naturalization, and medical referrals. Ayuda para los procesos de inmigración y naturalización y orientación sobre médicos are a small part of what we do. son solo una pequeña parte de lo que hacemos. For help, information, or to volunteer. Para ayuda, información o para ofrecerse como voluntario. Contact the Hispanic Committee of Virginia. Comuníquese con el Comité Hispano de Virginia. Helping everyone participate more fully in American society. Ayudando a todos a participar plenamente en la sociedad norteamericana.
Would you notice if you were missing half your kidney function? According to the National Kidney Foundation, 20 million people have chronic kidney disease and 20 million more may be at risk and not even know it. Anyone with high blood pressure, diabetes, or family history of chronic kidney disease is at risk. Early diagnosis is vitally important. To get the whole story, talk to your doctor and visit the National Kidney Foundation at kidney.org or call for a free brochure. Because when it comes to chronic kidney disease, you might not know the half. Hello. Hello. My name is Charnel Herring, and I am the Democratic candidate for the Virginia House of Delegates, 46th District. The district I'm running for includes a large part of Western Alexandria and one precinct in Fairfax County in the Skyline Bailey Crossroads area. I'm running to continue to represent the voters as my predecessor, Delegate Brian Moran, has done so well for the past 13 years. I would appreciate your voting January 13th, and I would respectfully request your vote. Again, my name is Charnel Herring. Thank you. It's a busy time between the holidays and the inauguration of a new president. <laughs> Oops. But believe it or not, there's an election going on in between that time. On Tuesday, January 13th, voters in the west end of Alexandria City and parts of the Alexandria part of Fairfax County will have a chance to choose a new delegate for the Virginia House of Delegates to replace outgoing Brian Moran, who's running for governor. Don't forget to vote between 6 a.m. and 7 p.m. on Tuesday, January 13th. Welcome back to uh, Inside Scoop Virginia. My guest tonight is Sharon Bulova, Braddock District Supervisor. She's running for chair of Fairfax County during, uh, on February 3rd. Um, let's talk about the budget. I mean, the nation is uh, in an economic crisis to say the least. Uh, we have a global economic crisis. Uh, there are a lot of factors at the national and the international level that have caused this. Uh, and uh, municipalities across Virginia, municipalities across the East Coast, municipalities across the nation are trying to cope with this. Uh, the, the state's facing a deficit. Uh, virtually just about every state is facing a deficit. Uh, many municipalities have to deal with the deficit. And uh, unlike the federal government, counties and states cannot print their own money. That's right. So you have to balance the budget. Uh, with uh, you have extensive experience on budgetary matters. Uh, what is the extent of the problem in Fairfax, and how are you going? How is the board going to deal with it? The um, this is the most serious downturn uh, that I ever recall, mm -hmm. and I was budget chairman uh, during the '90s when we dealt with a recession. Uh, that was very serious and the board uh, I think made some changes uh, to the, our delivery of service uh, and uh, came out of the recession years actually for the better. So it gave us an opportunity actually as painful as it was to step back to review our operations, uh, to look at our priorities, reassess our priorities and to consider things that maybe were something that were, was nice to have once uh, but that uh, could be let go so that we could reallocate our, our resources towards uh, something that was a higher priority or a bigger need. Um, this is a more serious downturn, and, I, and I've never seen you know, the kinds of uh, factors that are going on globally as well as in the nation, and we are not immune from that in Fairfax County. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we are required to adopt a balanced budget, and we did so uh, last spring. Uh, and as we progressed through this current fiscal year, we started to see some of the revenue that we had projected uh, not materialize, such as sales taxes and car taxes. People weren't buying goods. They weren't buying cars. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so we were starting to see um, our revenues not materialize and were forced to close a projected shortfall within this current fiscal year of about $50 million. That was serious. Uh, but we are balanced uh, uh, in doing so. We, one of the things that we did was to have a one-day furlough day 
for our employee, meaning that uh, it was a day off but without, uh, without getting paid, as well as a number of other reductions and eliminations that, uh, that we did during this current fiscal year. As we look ahead to, uh, to fiscal year 2010, which will be advertised, there will be a, a county executive advertised budget in February, February 23rd. As we project ahead, if we, we know that if we tried to do everything that we're doing today at the same level that we're doing today, uh, based on the revenue projections that we're looking at, we would have about a $650 million shortfall. So that's not okay. We mm -hmm. can't print more money, and, uh, and so counties and states are required to do what is necessary to bring us into fiscal equilibrium. And so that's something that the board has already started working on, already started to engage the community in. Uh, so that the community has a chance to actually come to the table with us to understand what's happening and uh, to give us some of their suggestions for, um, for what people believe to be their highest priorities or suggestions for things that they would suggest that be reduced or eliminated or done differently. And you do the, these are they public hearings done around the county, is that how it's done? Plus you do some right at the government center as well, I believe. We've done two different things um, in tandem. Mm -hmm. um, one of those things is to, uh, is to have li a lines of business review, and this was for um, the Board of Supervisors. Uh, we called it LOBS, or lines of business review. The schools also had a similar process called program reviews and we both worked together very closely to you know to look at what we were doing and how we were you know identifying potential options for reductions so we we went through the board went through i think it was altogether about nine all-day sessions going through every service every program uh, talking to agency head department heads um, they came with recommendations or suggestions for uh, what could be reduced at different levels. So that was a lines of business review. It gave us a lot of information and it sort of set the stage uh, for the county executive being able to put something on the table for advertisement. At the same time, we, uh, we engaged the community through a process of community dialogues. And the community dialogues, there were about 20 of them throughout the entire county. Generally, uh, and they were done on weekends, they were done in the evenings, they were done during times uh, where people would be able to come and participate. General, I think the, the smallest was maybe 30 or 40 people, the largest was, um, I mean, 60 to 70 people. Uh, information was provided regarding what was going on, why it was happening, where our money comes from, what, where it goes as far as programs and services. Uh, and then the uh, audience was broken into small group discussions that were facilitated by uh, county staff and, and also school staff. And uh, folks had an opportunity to give recommendations for highest priorities, you know, what needs to be especially, um, what we needed to be especially careful about making reductions in. Uh, high on the list was education, public safety, uh, also human services, people understanding that this was a time where uh, people come to the county and turn to the mm -hmm. county uh, when they are uh, most in need. And, uh, and then the public was given the opportunity to say, well, what are things that they would be willing to do without or they would be willing to see reduced? Not only were the um, uh, community, members of the community doing this, but also our county staff. And so a third process or similar process was something called brown bag lunches that the uh, county employees had during lunchtime. Uh, there were a number of them throughout the county, and they also were facilitated by county and school staff, uh, received the information, the, the 101 on county budget, also broke into uh, small group discussions. And I sat in on a number of those, and was, I was very impressed with the, you know, the tenor of discussion and uh, some of the recommendations that were made by people who actually provide the services and are most acquainted with what things could be done uh, differently or what things you know, maybe were wasteful that they felt could be eliminated. <coughs> I suspect there is probably nobody else on that board who is as intimately familiar with the nuances of the budget as you. And uh, you know, certainly I know from 
uh, past history, not here in Fairfax, but elsewhere, but obviously department heads are certainly going to try and protect their turf as best they can, and often will throw out a very draconian <laughs> type presentation in an effort to scare, or scare you off from making too many cuts on those areas. But of course that doesn't happen in Fairfax, I imagine. Um, where were the areas that people felt were the least important to them? Uh, I guess, you know, looking at, uh, you know, what's most important, you know, a well-educated community makes everything else shake out right. Mm -hmm. uh, public safety, you know, of course that's a priority. Yeah. You need to have a safe community. Uh, human services, you know, is critical. There are other maybe recreational programs uh, or hours of um, non-critical services uh, that people did identify um, in a number of different areas. Uh, I think that what was, what was suggested uh, through the community dialogues and the brown bag lunches are not going to amount to uh, the $650 million that we're going to need to close the shortfall, but they're helpful and it helps to give us and the county executive and the superintendent of schools some sense of what people uh, feel is important or maybe not that critical. So, you know, we, I think we got a lot of good feedback just because we had some specifics on the table as part of the lines of business doesn't mean that those are the only things that the board and the school board are going to be considering. And so I, I know that we're looking at overarching opportunities, maybe for some consolidations between the schools and the county. What if we did more things together rather than separately in an attempt to, uh, to, uh, to reduce the administrative overhead or the duplicative overhead that, uh, that we have in, in our, both of our houses? I know the deficit sounds like an enormous amount of money, and it is, but it's relative to the budget of the county. I mean, we're in a, we're in a county that's larger than six states in terms True. of population. And uh, if you look at it that way, it's certainly we're facing the same issues everyone else is facing, although I think we're even in some ways a little less uh, threatened because of our strong economic base. We're going to be back in two minutes. Uh, keep watching. My guest today is Fairfax County uh, Supervisor Sharon Bowen. wash your car at home. When I wash my car, everything runs down the street and down into the storm drains. With all the chemicals and the soaps and waxes, the last thing I want to do is poison my own drinking water. At least here, it's all contained and recycled on site. That's why I also take my car in for oil changes instead of doing it myself. I might take a chance on spilling stuff. You know what the best part is? What? More time to kick back and watch the game. How far would you go? to protect the planet. I want you to build an ark. Here we go! Okay, that's good. Oh, okay. Ow! Oh, oh, oh. Maybe there's another way. People! The flood is imminent! Is it too much to ask for a little precipitation? Go to fightglobalwarming.com to find out what you and your community can do to reduce global warming pollution. Somewhere around the world, there are men and women of the armed forces risking their lives, helping rebuild communities after natural disasters, collecting toys for needy children, tutoring kids in school. These are your sons and daughters who work to keep us safe, secure, and free. Dedicated men and women who put their country first. Welcome back to Inside Scoop, Virginia. 
my guest today is Braddock Supervisor Sharon Bulliver, who is running as ch for the post of Chairman of the Fairfax County Board of Supervisors on February 3rd. Welcome back, Sharon. Let's talk about uh, housing, and particularly affordable housing. Uh, over the last several years, uh, the board has worked in that direction. Let's face it, housing prices are extraordinarily high uh, in Fairfax, which uh, uh, is not surprising given the affluence of the area, its location, etc. Uh, but there's a certain segment of our community, uh, many of our public safety employees and others, uh, who cannot afford to live in the county. And uh, uh, I know you have some strong feelings in terms of how we should proceed in that direction. I do, and uh, and a priority um, of our of our board of supervisors has been to uh, has been to address the issue of affordable housing. And you're you're exactly right. The and there's an, a spectrum of of uh, need for housing. First of all, you've got uh, entry level in individuals like uh, our children who are mm -hmm. getting out of uh, school and want to be able to remain here in the area. Uh, to be able to find a job and then also to be able to live here in Fairfax County. Uh, you have um, individuals like uh, your police officers and nurses and firefighters, uh, teachers. Um, you know, you, you want to make sure that people of all incomes and all uh, abilities are able to uh, not just work here in Fairfax County but also to make Fairfax County their home. And, uh, and then at the far end of the spectrum, you also have a homeless population, and, and the county has established a goal of trying to end homelessness as we know it within 10 years. So all of those are things that, you know, that, that our board has been committed to. One of the things that, uh, that, that we've done that I think is, is, uh, is progressive, and it's, it's something that, uh, that other jurisdictions have not done, is to dedicate one penny on the tax rate for the preservation of affordable housing. Um, we found that uh, we can be working as hard as we can to, uh, to encourage the private sector to build some affordable housing when they're developing a community. Um, we do have ordinances that require that. Um, and we also um, have uh, built affordable housing, such as in my Braddock district, Little River Glen, which is affordable housing mm. for seniors of moderate, lower and moderate income. So, you know, at the same time that we're trying to create affordable housing, we've found that we're bleeding at the other end when we lose affordable housing because uh, someone decides to sell uh, apartments uh, that already have been uh, affordable and uh, it's on the market to be sold to someone who's going to turn it into luxury something or another that is not affordable to uh, to the to the community and uh, and so a couple of years ago we established a policy where one penny on the tax rate uh, is dedicated uh, to go into a fund so that we're able, when we identify opportunities, to, uh, to stop something from being uh, turned from affordable housing into uh, something else, that we're able to actually make a purchase and keep units affordable. A place where we've done that in the county and actually in my Braddock district, one of the largest, is the Wedgwood um, apartment complex. It's a lovely place and it's been affordable uh, for many years and uh, it was about to be lost and the, and the county was able to negotiate a purchase of that and, uh, and we're able to allow people to remain uh, there and, uh, and we're also able to, as people leave, uh, to move people into those units uh, so that they're able to have something that's affordable and live here in Fairfax County. My recollection is that your opponent has been critical of that, but my recollection is also that there have been, uh, I mean, there's been some national recognition of this program in it, terms of what has it, been done. It has been identified as, uh, you know, as, a, uh, as an innovative program and uh, something that has been uniquely effective and, uh, and we're very proud of it and, and I in particular am very proud of, uh, of the program. Well, the more affordable housing the better if you ask me in, in Fairfax. Um, let's move for a minute into the environment. Um, I know that the board has been moving to increase the canopy and increase the amount of parkland. 
Give me some specifics. What's been going on in, in, in that respect? The, uh, the county has been uh, very progressive in our uh, environmental agenda. Uh, something that I, uh, that I admire the chairman in the chairman is the fact that he has pulled together the environmental community. Former chairman now, The right? former right. chairman, he's, yes, he's that's actually, right. Uh, that's right. But uh, he's, 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 he's pulled together um, a, uh, the, the environmental community so that we're able to, uh, to identify environmental initiatives um, such as the preservation of tree canopy mm -hmm. and actually to, uh, we have a goal of increasing our tree canopy. I think it's increasing it to about 45%. Uh, and, uh, and also to put more of our uh, land into open space, uh, park land, and, uh, and right now our goal is, and I think we've about achieved our goal, of having 10% of our land in Fairfax County dedicated to open space or recreational properties. Um, so uh, also sustainable energy and uh, making sure that uh, you know we are moving toward green energy sustainability uh, our, uh, we have a policy where uh, new buildings that we are building in Fairfax County fire stations and libraries are built to lead green standards and uh, and that's been very promising so I I'm not sure if any other jurisdiction has been as aggressive as Fairfax County has been in moving forward with uh, environmental initiatives. It's been, it's been, uh, I think, um, really impressive, and I think, uh, I think there's more that can be done. Uh, the, we have a cool neighborhoods program, we have cool schools program, and uh, and people are very excited about the opportunity to personally participate in, in uh, reducing their carbon footprint and, uh, and making uh, Fairfax County a cleaner place. And my understanding is the business community has also been embracing it here within Fairfax County as well. The business community is there. Uh, I had the, uh, the privilege of attending a, uh, a Board of Trade Potomac Conference event uh, a couple of months ago. And uh, and the business community was reporting on I initiatives that you know that they uh, had adopted. Someone said something that I thought was really interesting, and that was, often people talk more about what they do than actually doing things. In the environmental arena, people are doing more than they're actually talking about, which I thought was was interesting. I, I think people sort of underplay the significance of actions that they're taking. And one of the things that we should be doing is telling, telling our story more as a community. Uh, and that's the business community as well as the private community. The, uh, you know, Fairfax is blessed with a pretty strong economy. Certainly we're getting hit with the, this economic crisis as everyone else. But it doesn't seem that we're being hit quite as hard at this point. How do we keep that business how do we keep attracting good business into Fairfax uh, and, and in order to obviously keep our unemployment low, offer good jobs uh, and the like to make sure that our economy remains vibrant here? Fairfax County is, uh, is very pro-business uh, and our policies are, uh, are very supportive of economic development. Uh, the Econo Economic Development Authority does, I think, an outstanding job of of promoting Fairfax County and attracting businesses to the area. Two things that I think are especially promising right now um, for, the, for growth and development and, and business development, one is the Tyson's Corner new vision and plan. Uh, and there's, there's, you know, essentially we're building a new green city. And the business community is very excited about that. The environmental community is very excited about that. Uh, we have tremendous opportunity for you know being able to have business growth as well as residential growth growth in a more walkable uh, community transit oriented. The other is BRAC and while we've been concerned and should be concerned about the impact of BRAC on our transportation and on our schools it also is going to be I think one of the things that help us to pull out of this downturn uh, more quickly than maybe some other areas. And BRAC, just for our uh, uh, viewers' edification, that's the base realignment. Base realignment, that's right. Uh, and it's centered around Fort, Fort Belvoir. Fort Belvoir, EPG, 
that mm -hmm. uh, the Richmond uh, Richmond uh, um, Highway corridor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I imagine it's been it's been uh, a, 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 a give and take and a, and a little bit of a, a tugging contest with the military in terms of some of the transportation issues down there because their hands are tied in terms of what they can do and and the county has certain demands that they put on anyone who's going to do those things unfortunately we can't demand quite as much of the federal government as we can demand of of private employers and the like the um, we were chatting off camera a little bit about style and uh, first of all in fairfax county it's not unique for a woman chairman. I mean, we've right. had Kate Hanley, we've had Audrey Moore, I think Mar it was Martha Panino, was she chair? She was not, point? she was vice chairman, yeah. and then uh, earlier than that, Jean Packard. Jean was, Packard, uh, that's right. I knew there was one other that I couldn't recall. Uh, define your, uh, how, will you, how will you serve as chairman? What will, what will your style be? How will you do it? Uh, everyone has their own style, and, uh, and so I guess if I were just to describe my style, um, I'm very collaborative, uh, and uh, evidence of that is my work on the budget. And uh, you, you cannot pass a budget unless you manage to corral <laughs> sometimes mm -hmm. or to, you know, to work effectively with your colleagues. Uh, and so I, I have a very collaborative um, approach. And I also, I guess if I was going to describe myself, it would be as an engaged um, supervisor. I enjoy engaging my uh, constituents. I like to reach out and in the Braddock District I think you'll see that we've had we've had task forces and community dialogues on almost any subject and I really think that when a, a well-served community is a community that uh, has opportunities to be brought to the table and to be part of the solution uh, Jerry Connolly has done that as well, and uh, when we've had difficulties, such as the emergence of gang activity some years ago, uh, we pulled the community together. I did in my Braddock district, and, uh, and that actually was a, a model for how we proceeded countywide with, with bringing the community together to find solutions that, uh, that have been very effective. You haven't seen uh, gang activity take over in Fairfax County like it has in some other parts of the mm -hmm. country. Same with uh, housing, same with homelessness. Um, I, you know, I believe in um, reaching out to the community, sharing information with the community, and then uh, inviting the community to work with me and to work with our county government to, uh, to find solutions to, uh, to things that uh, are of concern to us. The, uh, uh, what is involved how do you view your role? We only have a few seconds before we break, but just in, in 25 words or less, how is the, 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 the role different? What's the different role that a chairman plays versus a district supervisor? The chairman sets the tone and, uh, and sets the agenda. A good chairman sets the agenda and makes sure that the chairman is uh, leading the board, bringing the board um, with him or her, uh, to accomplish something. And uh, if, if you can't pull your colleagues together, if you can't communicate uh, and agree upon an agenda, uh, then you're not going to get anywhere. I want to get back. I want to discuss that a little bit more when we break. Uh, we'll be back in two minutes. Stay with us. Uh, my guest today is Sharon Bullock. Thanks. Around the world, one out of every three women will be beaten or otherwise abused in their lifetime, often by a family member or loved one. A future free from violence. It's all she's ever wished for. Did you know you have the power to stop children from joining gangs? You can help a father find a job and home for his family. You can assist a woman who can't afford the medicine she needs to live in the home she can't live without. 
you can choose to make a difference in our community. Support Volunteers of America, and you can help improve the lives of nearly 2 million Americans each year with programs and services that help individuals and families overcome their challenges to become as independent as possible. Support the programs that are working in our community. Contact Volunteers of America today. Call 1-800-899-0089. For some folks, saving for the future is easy, but for you, it might take a little more effort. Saving for your future is your responsibility, and there's a lot to save for. I never thought of that. Like your child's education, perhaps uncovered medical expenses, or just to be sure you can live the way you want when you retire. The time is now to save for tomorrow. Save now or work forever. The choice is yours. Choose to save. Welcome back to Inside Scoop, Virginia. My guest today is Sharon Bulova, who is the Braddock Once District again. Supervisor for the Fairfax County Board of Supervisors. Uh, on February 3rd, she is seeking your vote uh, to uh, become chairman of that board. Uh, to succeed Jerry, Jerry Connolly, who uh, was re elected in November to Congress. Uh, Jerry resigned as board chairman on the 2nd of January, and he is, will be sworn in on January 6th as uh, the new 11th District Congressman. Sharon, we were talking about the, the role of chairman, and I'd love to have you expand on that a little bit. Uh, it's a bully pulpit of sorts, but you really only have the same, amount, same vote as everyone else, but, but it's, it's, it's a leadership role that, that you play. Describe to me how, and, and I know you want to deal with consensus, you know, how will you lead? The, the last thing you want to do as a, uh, as a leader or a chairman is to, um, to decide that you think you want to go someplace and think you're leading a parade and then to turn around and find that there's no one behind you following. So uh, not, not only uh, as, a, as a leader or as a chairman, do you need to have some ideas and some goals and aspirations uh, and, and you know, believe that you want to get some things accomplished, but you also need to work with your colleagues uh, in order to get that done. And frankly, um, we, have, we have a great board. We have a number of uh, members or you know, all of the members of the Board of Supervisors have their own ideas and have their own um, uh, goals. One of the things that, uh, that Jerry did that I would like to replicate uh, would be to, uh, to have a retreat or a gathering of some sort to pull my colleagues together under my chairmanship, assuming that happens, and, uh, and for us to be able to have a discussion regarding uh, my colleagues' uh, uh, desires to get things done within their district and to get things done countywide. When Jerry was, was chairman, we did that. It was extremely effective. It gave everybody an opportunity to hear from each other. Uh, different districts are different, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, they all have different flavors and you know, things that are going on that may be unique to the, to, the, uh, to the respective districts. And it's important for us all to hear that and understand that. And so I think it's something that, uh, you know, that needs to happen again. Uh, now that we have a new board, and especially under a new chairman, so I would uh, I would like to get us together and confirm things that have been a priority, sort of chart where we want to be going, and uh, and then make sure that as a board we are moving in that direction together. The uh, we spoke earlier about your you have a, well I'll, I'll be more blunt you have a reputation as a consensus builder. Uh, and you also have a reputation of being able to work across the aisle, something you're, that, that the, 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 just the immediate past chairman uh, has been able to do. Uh, will you, uh, is, that, is that how you're going to try and move forward? I mean, are you, the, I'm, uh, granted, the Democrats have a, a, a strong hold on this board right now, um, but how do you deal with the Republicans? How do you bring them into the mix? Uh, I've, I've had experience working across party lines and I and actually I think that's one of the things that I'm, I'm actually best known for within my district mm -hmm. and and I think countywide um, when it comes time to adopting a budget um, I've made it a practice of 
meeting with each one of my colleagues individually on a package uh, to discuss, you know, here's Sharon Bulova's version of how I think we should change or make amendments to the county executive's advertised budget. And I've met with my Republican colleagues as well as my Democratic colleagues and made changes, you know, along the way to reflect what, you know, what that, those discussions entailed. So I, uh, you know, I, I will, will do that as chairman. I think it's critical that we do that. Remember, whether you're a Republican or a Democrat, you were elected within your district, and, uh, and it's your responsibility to represent your, uh, the people who elected you. And so as a chairman, I need to make sure that I'm respectful of that. And, uh, and in order to get things done, a budget needs to be adopted, and you need to have a majority of people who, um, who agree uh, to, with what is in the budget uh, in order to fund the priorities that, uh, that you uh, do wish to see happen. The, uh, I had the pleasure, I was at your campaign office yesterday and uh, for an open house and uh, saw you speak there, but I was impressed at the numbers of people who were there. They were, uh, and they were, they were from all walks of life and, uh, you know, I'm not sure there weren't a, a number of Republicans in that room as well. I think, They're I think with there you. might have been. Yeah, it looked it to me, <laughs> some of them I knew. Uh, and that was good to see. Um, if you're elected chair, you have the bully pulpit. What's your vision? What's your vision? Where is Fairfax going, or where should it go under Sharon Bulova's chairmanship? Um, we talked earlier in the program about the, uh, the COG initiative. It's actually called Greater Washington 2050. And, uh, and it's an initiative for us to work more effectively together as a region in order to, uh, you know, to, to grow and develop and to have transportation policies, affordable housing policies, uh, environmental policies that, that are coordinated rather than working at cross purposes. Um, I, I plan to work uh, to make that happen. And so in order to do that, not only do I need to work regionally, but I need to work within Fairfax County. Uh, because our constituents need to be on board, need to understand what we're attempting to do, and need, there needs to be buy-in. So that's a major initiative, um, and that's a major priority of mine as chairman of the Board of Supervisors. Um, I'm a rail person, and uh, rail to Dulles is something that I want to make sure continues to, uh, to move forward. Um, all the way to Dulles, not just to Tyson's mm -hmm. Corner, and to, uh, to make sure that the project is completed. Uh, the rail in the I-66 corridor to the, uh, to the Centerville area is another project that I would like to see happen. Uh, I would like to be able to see uh, bus rapid transit or express bus on the new hot lanes uh, that are being uh, constructed on the Capitol Beltway. And I would like to see all of those things connect better. So I, I think we have a really good skeleton of plans and projects that are in place or being planned, but making sure that all of those things connect well is something that I would make a priority of mine, including trails. And so, um, you know, it's, it's not okay for things to exist. They also need to connect. And so I think the board's done a great job of putting things in place or putting things on plans, and, uh, and I would like to um, make it a priority of mine and our boards uh, to do more connectivity. One of the things I always do, and you know, we could probably talk for another two hours, uh, one of the things I always try to do with candidates who are on this show is give them an opportunity to speak directly to the voters. So why don't you tell our viewers why they should vote for you on February 3rd? Thank you, George. Uh, Fairfax County is a great place to live, to work, uh, to play, to raise our families, and to grow older comfortably. Uh, we have a sterling reputation uh, nationally. We, um, I think Newsweek uh, called us one of the great success stories of our time. And we have the greatest school system, uh, one of the greatest school systems in the nation. Uh, Newsweek magazine rated our school system, uh, all of our high schools, in the top 3%. Uh, we have a lot of really good things going for us. And I want to make sure that that continues to happen, that we continue to move in that direction. We also have a very difficult fiscal situation right now, and I feel that I am uniquely 
qualified to be able to steer us through this current downturn just as I did during the 90s when we dealt with a very severe recession then. Um, I plan to work with my colleagues very closely. I have a collaborative uh, consensus building approach and I plan to work with the community, uh, with our constituents to make sure that people are engaged and are part of the solution. Thank you. Boy, you were even brief. I was <laughs> hoping you'd give me another minute to close out the show. No, I'm kidding. So uh, February 3rd, let's talk a little bit about your campaign. You have, uh, uh, at least I saw a small army of people there yesterday. They were making bumpers. They were taking signs <laughs> out to put out on in their yards and across the county. Uh, everybody, they, you can see the sign behind me. It's, uh, it's white uh, with your name on it. And it says chairman of the board. And uh, certainly I hope, and uh, there are many other uh, Democrats across Fairfax and many other folks who hope that uh, uh, that becomes a reality, and um, uh, the your vision is uh, is where I think the county needs to go, and where a majority of the people within the county think it uh, needs to go. You know, we have a highly educated electorate here, and so it's not a place where politicians can throw homilies and sort of empty rhetoric across the table. We expect, expect far more. Expect you to from, deliver. From, and and you know that's why. I think it's it's amazing in terms of the budget. You know, the amount of knowledge that you have to keep track of relative to the budget is in a budget of, in, a, in a county 1.1 million people is, is astonishing to me. And I guess the, after having dealt with it for how long? 17 years. Seven, 17 years as um, budget chairman. You must have the, the department heads can't pull the wool over your eyes. I don't think. <laughs> No, and I, I would uh, just like to say, lastly, that uh, this is an, a very important election, as, as you just mm -hmm. said. And uh, usually during an election year, the chairman's race is, you know, is front line and center. Uh, this will be on February 3rd, a time where people are not expecting an important race to be taking place. And uh, people will be able to vote at their usual um, polling places. Uh, they can vote absentee, absentee in person as well. Uh, they'll be able to find that information on the county's website. Pay attention. Uh, February 3rd, we need you to vote between 6 a.m. and 7 p.m. Again, that's Tuesday, February 3rd. And thank you, Sharon Bullock. Thank you, George. It's been a pleasure.